Hi everybody, well, what's, what? Is it true? Bob Iger, CEO, returning CEO of Disney, says I was right. So, uh, Bob Iger has now been back as CEO for quite a few months now, and I did a video on this channel not too long, but you know, not too long ago, saying not my Disney anymore, and I went through my reasonings. I went through the fact that they're just nickel and diming everybody. They're just looking to grab money wherever they can. They're and they're cutting services. They're cutting staffs, and it's not the most magical place on earth anymore. It's now the most corporate place on earth, as far as I was concerned. They've, uh, they did things like they cut out Magical Express. You can't get your, your, you can't get picked up at the airport anymore unless you want to pay for it from something else. You had to pay for parking at a luxury resort. I'm paying $900 a night to stay at Animal Kingdom in a one bedroom suite and they want me to pay for parking for the privilege of giving them $900 a night to stay there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Cutting magic hours after magic hours, cutting hours beforehand for, guests staying at hotels, then they brought out that stupid system, fast, replacing the fast pass system now. Uh, it's it just like ridiculous. And by the way, fast pass was free. This one, they charge. Simple. It's simple. Same thing, only a worse system, and you have to pay for it. That's why it, did, it wasn't my Disney anymore. Well, Bob Iger in a recent interview came out and he said, uh, Oh yeah, and by the way, their newest, brightest hotel, it's Galactic Star Wars, like $6,000 a night for a family of four. Uh, for, for two nights for a family of four. Less than 48 hours. 44 hour trip, $6,000. Ooh, can't wait to sign up for that. But <laughs> um, let's just say Bob Iger's now come out and said, yeah, you know what? Maybe we were too aggressive. Maybe we're, we forgot about the people who made us as big as we are. Maybe we're pricing people out of our parks and our events. And how can you tell that? Well, how about the Galactic Star Cruiser already? Not even a year old, and now they've cut back different entertainment shows on board. It used to have two two shows a night. Can't do two shows a night and dinner services anymore because there's not enough people. So they're doing one. Uh, and also, oh, by the way, we used to go all week. Now we're gonna start cutting back and only go during the peaks. So we're gonna skip one of those cruises in the middle of the week. Why? Well, cause, cause there's not enough people going anymore. There are not enough people going anymore. The staff has been cut their hours, et cetera, et cetera. And then one of the things he had to do when he came back is, oh, by the way, if you're staying at one of our luxury resorts, yeah, don't worry, you can park there now. You can park there and we're not gonna charge you $28 a day to, to do that. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're, you're just gonna take the $900. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Uh, it should never have been touched to begin with. It should never have been done. But they were looking for the dollar, looking for the dollar. And the pandemic was not a shutdown for Disney as far as, oh my God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? It was, hey guys, all those things we wanted to get rid of, this is our excuse. And those things we wanted to change, this is our excuse. We can use this. Let's cut back on all the singers and dancers and band members in the parks, because they're too expensive. We have to pay them more than the uh, average person working there. So they, they, they get rid of all of them. They're still not all back yet. They've been in full service for over a year. They haven't brought them all back yet. So your experience in the park is much less, but guess what? The price has gone up three times since the pandemic to get into their parks. That's right, three times. 
Not to mention the new booking system for the FastPass system. You have to pay for that. Yet you can now pay to get on individual rides like Rise of the Resistance, gotta pay for that. And Bob Iger's come out and said, yeah, you know what, ah, maybe we made that a bad decision. Maybe we're, we're too aggressive. Maybe we need to cut back on that kind of thing and focus more on the guest experience. What? You mean the thing that made Disney great? Focusing on the guest experience, making their time in Disney a magical time as often as possible. But instead, you wanted to make it pay before anything else. And that's why it's not my Disney anymore. And until I see some more changes, I'm still not going back to Disney. I've thought about it and I've talked myself out of it because it's just too darn expensive. And if it's expensive, like I go on cruises all the time, guys, you know that. I can afford to go to Disney, but I don't, I still, when I'm booking my travel and my vacations and my entertainment, I'm looking at value for money. And right now I get far more value on a cruise than I do going to a Disney hotel and park. I don't have to stand in line for two and a half hours to get on a ride. Oh yeah, I could pay more to get on it, I guess. <laughs> Thanks guys. I appreciate the fact that I can pay to skip ahead of the people who can't afford to pay. I'm glad you're making Disney a class system now where the rich get served first and the poor people can just stand in line. Yikes, at least on a cruise ship. I can stay in an inside cheapest cabin you can possibly stay in. I still can eat at the same restaurants. I can still get free food. I can still get free entertainment every night and I can enjoy the pool and fun and activities. You can't say that at Disney. And that's a shame because I love Disney. I do, but I bet you I will go back to Universal Studios before I ever step foot in a Disney park again.